Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Raka Kodash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a few scriptures, you know, going into the importance of Yahweh Shai. And how if it wasn't for his sacrifice, you know, if it wasn't for his blood being shed by him being crucified, the nation of Israel as a whole wouldn't have a chance. We would have no way back to the Father. We wouldn't have a salvation. We wouldn't have hope. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, I just want to you know, going to a few scriptures, you know, showing the importance of our Hamashiach and how through him we have an everlasting salvation. And the time's gonna come where the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, with Yahweh Shai leading the charge, King David under him the 12 disciples and the 144,000 men that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai are going to be raised up. The, the mountain of Jerusalem is going to be above all other mountains. And we're going to rule the nations with an iron fist in righteousness through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So the first scripture I wanted to get through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai was the book of Luke. Chapter 1. And um I'll start at verse 68 and it reads Blessed be the Lord power of Israel for he hath visited and redeemed his people. So, so much for the rest of the nations being redeemed. You see? Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai is the power of Israel and Israel alone. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us, possessive pronoun, in the house of his servant David, you see? And who's this horn that's been raised up? Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, we can jump up in the same chapter to the around, let me see. I'll start at the 30th verse, right? And it reads, And the angel said unto her, and that angel was Gabriel. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with the Most High. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahweh Shai. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord power shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, giving, giving credence that, Yah that Solomon was Yahweh Shai. You see that? And he shall reign over the house of Jacob, right? The 12 tribes of Israel, a so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no and perpetual kingdom, everlasting, under Yahweh Shai, see? 
the importance of Yahweh Shai is it's crucial, man. It's crucial because of him, we can repent. We have forgiveness of sins through him. Matter of fact, let's prove that real quick. I'm going to come back to Luke. Um, I'm going to come back to Luke. Let me grab my, what do I want? Acts 5. And um, verse 30, right? And this is Peter. He was talking to these uh, the wicked Sadducees, man, right? And it reads, the book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 30, and it reads, The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on the tree, right? It was Jake that delivered Yahweh Shai up to the Romans, man. See? Him had the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. If it wasn't for Yahweh Shai, we would be through. No way back to the Father without Yahweh Shai. Let's go back to Luke 160. Eight again. I'm going to read down. Let's read 168 again. The book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 68 again. Blessed be the Lord power of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us. And the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began, right? That he, Salakia, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. We have enemies, Jake. See, you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that think everybody wants to be your friend? No. These nations are our enemies, man, starting with Esau, Edom. The so-called white man. He's the arch enemy of Yasha Allah. And that can be proven pursuing in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter. You see? Continuing on. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Holy goes into separate you see, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath, right? The promise, oath goes into promise, which he swear to our father, Abraham. You see, that everlasting covenant was promised to Abraham's seed. Matter of fact, let's go there. Uh, Genesis, the 17th chapter. I'm going to go straight to the point. In verse 19, it reads, the book of Genesis, chapter 17, in verse 19, it reads, And the Most High said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. And we know, we know, you know, if you read the book of Genesis, the 25th chapter, the seed that was blessed after him, it was Jacob. For those of you, for those of you that do not know that, go read it. All right. Genesis, the 27th chapter, a matter of fact. When Jacob was, uh, Jacob received the, uh, the birthright, man. You see? And the you other know, people will say, oh, he, you know, he stole the birthright. No. It was it read Romans 9. Okay? This was the way it was supposed to play out. This was the way it was supposed to play out. Right? Continuing on. I'm gonna read this again from the top. 
And the Most High said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, everlasting, and with his seed after him. And it was Jacob that seed was established. And Jacob is what? The progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel. And Ahamashiach came out of what tribe? Judah. See? And we can prove that, but before we do, I want to um, get another precept. Let's go to, uh, let's jump up to Genesis, uh, what's that, the 22nd chapter. Because remember, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the Most High, tempted um, Abraham. He tempted him. Right? Let me see. Where do I want to go? And that sealed the deal. Because he passed that test. He was going to give up his own son. He was going to he was gonna sacrifice Isaac, man. I recommend you read uh, this whole chapter. If you haven't already. Um, I must start here. The book of, uh, the book of Genesis chapter 22 and verse 16, it reads, and said by myself to Lachia, um, yeah, I'll start there and said by myself, have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou has done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, right? Cause remember at this time. Um, I believe the chapter before this, uh, Hagar and Ishmael were banished. They were banished, but they ended up being rescued or, 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 or saved rather by an angel. You know, they didn't, they didn't starve or dehydrate out there. They didn't thirst to death. Uh, read that, read the previous chapter. It goes into it. So, um, I, at this time, Isaac was, uh, uh, Jacob's only, uh, uh, air, you see, because when you read, um, I believe is that Genesis the 24, 20, 25th chapter, it goes into when, um, you know, Sarah passes away and then he ends up marrying, uh, uh what's her name, Katora. I want to say her name was Katora, Katura, and then he had what six more, six more sons with her, you see. So at this point in time. Isaac was his only heir, and he was going to sacrifice him. You see? This is what made him a friend of the Most High. He was obedient because he believed in his power. He knew that Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai could raise him up. You see, he believed, he understood, he, he was all in. But let's continue on. Let's get to the point. I'm going to read this again from the top. And said by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou has done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. You see that? Stars in the heaven and sand on the seashore. That's that you cannot measure a, a, a number, okay? The stars in heaven or the sand on the seashore, man. You see that? And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. You see that? When you possess the gate of your enemies, what? They're, they're subject to you, right? They're paying tributary. They're under you. You see, and this is going to be the climax of this thing in the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay? Jerusalem is going to be raised up. Let's go get that. Let's go to Micah. This is the time we're coming into. Is it Micah 4? Khan, the book of Micah. We're going to start from the top. Chapter 4 and verse 1, and it reads, But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. And mountains represent larger governments. Okay. Hills represent small governments. Mountains represent uh, larger governments. And it shall be exalted 
above the hills. See that? Above the smaller governments. And people shall flow unto it. This is the time we're coming into. All right, the time of Jacob. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the power of Jacob. You see that? And he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see? And nations that choose not to hearken, nations that choose not to walk in the paths of Yasha Allah. Let's get this real quick. The book of Isaiah chapter 60. And verse 12, and it reads, For the nation... And kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. And how would that be executed? By that rod of iron, man. Which rod of iron goes into what? Most rigorous rule. When you look it up in the blue letter Bible. See, let's prove it. The book of Revelations, the second chapter. And this is the Hamashiach speaking. This is Yahweh Shai speaking, man. I'm going to start at verse 25. But that, the book of Revelation is chapter 2 and verse 25. And it reads, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Hold fast to what? Your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures. Okay, the faith that you have, the belief. Hold it. Hold fast to it. Don't let no man take thy crown, man. Right? Continuing on. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And this is what we want, Akiyam. This is what we want. We want power over the nations. We want to be part of that governing body. In the eon to come. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Let me get this in the blue letter real quick. And this is only going to be possible through Yahweh Shai because of Yahweh Shai. Of course, Yahweh gave him uh, that power. But through Yahweh Shai, we're going to be able to receive that power because what? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Lord willing, we're part of that precious number. We're going to be joint heirs. You see? Bear with me. Strong's G, 4464. Hrabdas. Hrabdas. We want this definition in B. Right? When applied to kings with a rod of iron indicates the most severest rule. You see that? The most severest, most rigorous <laughs> rule. Do Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. We're going to rule the nations with an iron fist and righteousness. You see? But if it wasn't for the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, his blood, hey, we wouldn't have hope. We wouldn't have this. There will be no way. We'll be out of there. See? We'll be all the way through. Let's go back. And continue on in the book of Revelations chapter 2 and verse 27 again. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter 
shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. See? And I will give him the morning star, and he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, man. You see? This is what we got to look forward to. Lord willing, we endure until the end. You see? This is what this thing is looking like. Let's go back. Let's go back. In the Micah 4, continuing on, right? In verse 3, Micah chapter 4 and verse 3. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, right? Without rod or iron. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. It's going to be peace. It's going to be peace, man. See, the time of Jacob is going to be a time of peace. Yeah, you're going to have nations bucking up. That first thousand years is going to be a, a, a whooping into shape, period. You see, that's where that rod of iron is going to come into play. But guess what? When everything comes into its fulfillment, it's going to be peace, man. Forever. Let's get this real quick. The book of Daniel, chapter 2. And verse 44, and it reads, And in the days of these kings, in the days of what kings? These heathens, man, these heathen kings. Right? The Assyrian, Babylonian, the Medes and the Persians, right? The Greeks, the Romans, right? This revised Roman Empire, right? In the days of these kings, right? Show the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom should not be left to other people. Why? Because it's going to be left to Israel. We just read it in Micah 4. See? But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. You see? Perpetual kingdom. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to raise up the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. We're going to be above these nations where we ought to be. The only reason why we've been casted down is because of our disobedience. And we sinned against the Lord. See? But because of Yahweh, because of Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, we can now draw back to our Father. We have a way back to the Father through the Son. You see? And we can prove that. Let's close out here. Let's prove it here and close out if the Spirit allows. First Peter. The first chapter. In verse 3, and it reads, Blessed be the power and father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. From the dead. You see? <laughs> we have a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai. Our mediator, man. <laughs> if it wasn't for Yahweh Shai, we'll be finished, man. To an inheritance. Incorruptible, right? That everlasting covenant. Remember, Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai chose us at the end of the day. Matter of fact, let me get a quick preset. The 
the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 8, and it reads, When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob. Jacob. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. See? It's all about Israel. Point blank period. And if it wasn't for Yahweh Shai, we wouldn't have a way back to the Father. Ultimately, you see? Continuing on, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4 again. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. So this thing is reserved, man. Nothing can separate us from this, man. Nothing. The sword, death, principality, nothing can separate us from this, man. Continuing on, who are kept by the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Let's read that again. Who are kept by the power of of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we are kept by the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And we are in the last time, huh? And it's only a matter of time before Yahweh Shai cracks these clouds with the host of heaven. And delivers his elect, Lord willing. We're part of that precious number. Lord will. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam. And Akwathium were edified. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalim La Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakak Wadash, Shalawam.